The confession is on the order of the sheet with the reflection and the prayers of intercession. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Our sins accuse us, and so we confess them to God. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Re wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to pardon and to save sinners, bring you his pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. Today's psalm is Psalm 19. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words, their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out throughout all the earth, and their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy, like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the ends of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is forever, is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them there is great reward, but who can detect their errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me, then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my Rock and my Redeemer. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. When Carolyn is going to read for us first, and then Wendy. The reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8, 18 to 25. It's Christ, the power and the wisdom of God. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? For since in the wisdom of God the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our pro proclamation to save those who believe. For the Jews demand signs and the Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wider than human wisdom and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The reading is taken from John chapter 2, beginning to read at verse 13. Jesus cleanses the temple. 
The Passover of the Jews was near and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep and doves and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years and will you raise it up in three days? but he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you to Carolyn and to Wendy. I wonder if you have a phone or something like that that comes up with this time last year, or maybe like my mother, you have a five-year gardening diary in which you keep a record of what happens in your garden. My phone this week has come up with reminders of a holiday was I was on two years ago, and it's poignant because I know that immediately we came back from that holiday, my father was taken ill. And we have also been remembering that this time last year, we had just arrived in Australia for Clive's father's 80th birthday. And both of those are poignant for different reasons. We don't know when we're next going to be able to go back to Australia and all the uncertainty that lives around that. And of course, that's not the only reminders we've got at the moment. You see things like, I'm just going to have a Zoom meeting. A year ago, I didn't know what Zoom was. Some of you maybe still don't. You're lucky. Actually, it's very useful. Don't let me put Zoom down. Um, or I just need to go and sing to myself so that we can record for the choir. The choir have been amazing. They've learned so much. The last year, we are coming up to a whole load of anniversaries and reminders. And there are markers that are going on around us. In John's Gospel, one of the markers that John has is the Passover feast. And in today's Gospel, we come to the first of the three Passovers that John talks about. And Jesus cleanses the temple. This is a video of that clean, um, video representation of that cleansing. It was almost time for the Passover festival, so Jesus went to Jerusalem. found people selling cattle, sheep, and pigeons, and also the money changers sitting at their tables. out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle.
He overturned the tables of the money changers and scattered their coins. And he ordered those who sold pigeons... Take them out of here! Stop making my father's house a marketplace! His disciples remembered that the scripture says, My devotion to your house, O God, burns in me like a fire. The Jewish authorities came back at him with a question. What miracle can you perform to show us that you have the right to do this? Tear down this temple, and in three days I will build it again. Are you going to build it again in three days? It has taken 46 years to build this temple. But the temple Jesus was speaking about was his body. So when he was raised from death, his disciples remember that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and what Jesus had said. While Jesus was in Jerusalem during the Passover festival, many believed in him as they saw the miracles he performed. But Jesus did not trust himself to them because he knew them all. There was no need for anyone to tell him about them because he himself knew what was in their hearts. I'm wondering if the anniversaries that we currently remember at the moment make that reading all the more poignant. Firstly, because in March last year, we suddenly discovered what it was like to have our place of worship taken away from us in order to protect people in our midst. One of Jesus's complaints about what was happening in the temple was that the place of worship, the court of the Gentiles, had been taken over and worship removed because it had been turned into the marketplace. And the second reason I wonder if this is poignant is that we've had to dig deeper into our own worshipping resources and experience. We've been unable to rely on the usual elements of singing, of chatting to one another, of sharing tea and coffee, of gathering as community to worship. And that's been emphasised in this benefice by the decision that our worship would be, as this is, pre-recorded, um, which has in some ways, I think, emphasised that difference. So as I was thinking about this today, I asked myself, does this gospel send us back to ask questions of ourselves? And so some things that you might like to think about. When we return to worship in church, what will you appreciate taking up again? What will you miss from this very strange year? In what ways has your worship changed or been enhanced by the change of situation? I wonder if your view of church buildings has changed at all. And I wonder where you've been able to pray during this time and how you're going to continue that when we resume normal life. Although I'm not entirely sure that normal life exists anymore, really. One of the things that I've discovered is that walking or cycling around the area is crucial for me. I don't always spend my time when I'm doing that consciously praying as I walk or cycle, but I do find it helps me to recalibrate, to pause during the day, and it's a habit that I certainly hope to continue. Jesus turned the traders out of the temple because they were preventing people from worshipping. The building had become a focus of worship, and he challenges us to focus on him, his body that we raised after three days, not on our building, and to ensure that we assist one another to worship. 
So as we journey on, maybe we can revisit some of those questions that I just asked and use them to examine our own attitudes and our own welcome. Amen. And so the responsory. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. You are, sorry, you are the God of my salvation. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. In you I hope all the day long. O my God, in you I trust. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. And we declare together our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Our worship and our lives make sense, or make more sense, I think, when we learn to lean on Christ. And so we have the choir again singing, Lean on Me.